This place is loud. Kramer. Touchdown. Kramer hit him on a perfect pass. And it's been all Detroit, particularly Eric Kramer. I don't think anybody really gave you much of a chance. Probably not. I mean, you could feel, obviously, in the stadium, this was a big day. Who would have thought that he would have this kind of day in a playoff game? The Lions beat the Cowboys 38-6, to and that set up a meeting the following week with the Redskins at RFK Stadium in Washington. A trip to the Super Bowl was on the line. Other than when we got to the hotel, I think they were serving lion on the menu. <laughs> as I think back on the very first series, I'm rolling over to the left, a little half roll, and as I set up, I come back, and before I can even turn around, Charles Mann hit me, and the ball pops out, fumble, pick up, touchdown, 7 nothing. Good start. Yeah, so we had him right where we wanted him. <laughs> Pass is intercepted by Darryl Green, and Darryl Green will score for Washington. It's been a long, long, hard run, and uh, we ran and maybe ran out of gas. After several productive years with the Lions, Kramer signed a free agent deal with the Chicago Bears. But after several years there, his career came to an end because of a neck injury. He worked in TV as an analyst for a while, but what he didn't know was his life was about to spiral out of control due to a series of events. Your mom died. Mm -hmm. Your dad died. Yep. Your son Griffin died of a heroin overdose. Right. Um, you got divorced. Mm -hmm. I'm just... Yeah, the overall depression. Um, that's a real thing, man. And um, uh, it, it kind of zaps you of any will to do anything. There's no such thing as fighting it. There's nothing to fight. It's just sort of a fog that en engulfs you. Those moments, along with chronic depression, would make any healthy, well-adjusted human question why. Why is this happening to me? Kramer had two sons, Griffin and Dylan, who was five years younger. Kramer points to October 30th, 2011, as the day the spiral began. His 18-year-old son, Griffin, died tragically of a heroin overdose. And it's apparent from listening to Kramer, Griffin could still be alive today. And when Griffin had this initial reaction of, you know, just back and foaming at the mouth, uh, this kid started driving around and wondering what to do and calling people, what should I do? And everyone he talked to was like, you take him to the hospital. Well, he didn't. And he took him to his house. And he would have had to drag Griffin out of the car into his room and left him. And then apparently later left to go back to a party. As difficult as this tragedy was, telling his younger son Dylan about Griffin's death sent Kramer into a darker place. I asked Dylan to, to sit down in this chair and uh, Um, I don't remember the words, but in some way explained to him that different Griffin had just passed away. And, uh, as hard as it was to hear myself, I'm not sure what was worse. And, um, uh, in life, there may not be anything worse. I don't, yeah, I don't think so. And after that, the depression increased because the moments became worse. In his mind, with nothing positive to look forward to, and after years of pain, Kramer decided to end his life. Football's over, and, uh, and had been for a while. Um, uh, there's several key people here that are no longer here. So the feeling was that they're going that way, 
No one's coming that way. And uh, so that was, that was kind of, the I think, what got me down that road. On August 18th, 2015, Eric Kramer checked into the Goodnight Inn in Calabasas, California. He brought a nine millimeter handgun with him, which he had bought at a gun shop. The next day, the moment arrived. What are the moments before you actually do it like? So I wish I could remember all of them. Or maybe I don't. You remember driving to the hotel? I do. Do you remember walking into the hotel? No, it's like I wasn't there. And uh, I have no recollection of some things that actually did occur for a good stretch of time. Do you remember standing there with a gun? I don't. And putting it under your chin? No? I don't. Mm -mm. You don't remember that? So that was just an automatic reflex to? Yeah, I guess. I don't remember any. I don't when, remember. Did, when did your mind go blank that you couldn't remember what's happening? I don't know. The bullet pierced his tongue, traveled through his nasal passage, and exited through the top of his head. At that time, the damage to his brain reduced his mental capacity to that of a six-year-old. Now, nearly seven years later, Eric Kramer visited the Goodnight Inn with us for the first time since that fateful night. Why did you do it under here? I think because I didn't want to miss. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, like, I didn't want to miss. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go, oh no, you know? And uh, so even at close range, I'm a bad shot. <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, Kramer has talked himself into the theory that the bullet that traveled through his head actually got rid of his depression, which on the face of it, he agrees, makes absolutely no sense. The depression and all of the events that conspired to bring that depression um, are gone. And um, I hate to put it this way, but I think I shot it out of my head. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, but I haven't had a bad, 15 seconds or a bad five minutes since I woke up. Cheers. The Eric Kramer everyone knew has returned. It took years of rehab, but his brain regenerated, and he says he's back to normal. Star in the making. <laughs> Surgery helped with facial reconstruction. Today, Eric Kramer is once again Eric Kramer. I have no bad days. I was just going to say, people say, well, well, geez, today was a terrible day. Whoa, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> have I got a story for you? Having spent three days with Kramer at his home in California last month, I'm left with the feeling that I've witnessed a true miracle. He overcame amazing odds and horrific tragedies to once again become a fully functioning member of society. Doctors would tell you that individuals who have a near-death experience come out with a new appreciation for life. And one Dr. Kramer met during rehab left him with words that are still fresh in his mind today. I've been at this quite a while. I've seen people that have fallen out of airplanes and parachutes not open up. I've seen brain aneurysm. I've seen, because I quite honestly have never seen this before. And he goes, if I'm you, every week for the rest of my life, I go play the lotto. Because right now, look around you. There's no one as lucky as you. So I haven't taken his advice, but I have been very grateful every, every day. Pretty amazing. Local 4 wants you to know that if you or anyone you know are in a state of emotional distress, we urge you to reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. They are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And a couple of quick notes on Eric Kramer, who's now 57 years old. He wants to be a football coach. While we were there, he got a call that he will be the quarterback's coach at Camarillo High School in California in the fall. Also, he is starting a mentorship program for young kids, which will teach them kindness and compassion. His hope is to eliminate bullying.